Hilary Mremi is a corporate affairs manager at Precision Air, a Tanzanian airline. He is optimistic that passenger volumes will grow given the large infrastructure projects now being undertaken by ESC states. And we're looking ahead to have a very, very uh, good market, uh, out of uh, good numbers out of Uganda and from Uganda to Tanzania. As you know, there are a number of projects that we, Tanzania and Uganda, are jointly running. For example, the pipeline, uh, pipeline from Uganda to Tanzania, uh, the East Africa Community Headquarters in Arusha. On their part, hoteliers contend that East Africa's tourism potential is sky high, with just a few challenges to fix. So infrastructure, particularly airports, uh, need to be of a reasonable standard. And then that encourages the airlines to come, and the more airlines that come to the destination, then the, the, the easier it is for people to get their accessibility. As a destination, there are very few things missing in these, uh, in these East African countries. There's growing momentum for making it easy for Africans to freely travel across the continent. And this is supported by the African Union Commission Agenda 2063 that proposes for a creation of an African passport and an end to strict visa requirements. Airline industry players are listening to this message by powering on thousands of tourists to come and enjoy the beach, the hospitality industry, and that should help grow the tourism sector on the African continent, in the East African region, and beyond. And despite a poor performance and stiff competition on long-haul routes by competitors, observers believe that air expansion of local airlines and airports is a positive move. I'm expecting of airlines traveling all, all over the world like our colleagues in Kenya are doing. Uh, Kenya has got a very good network in the global area. I would like to have also Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania. Players are also concerned that the region's airline industry is also being held back by exorbitant air tickets, airport fees and unresolved airspace issues. Air ticket is not just the ticket alone. There are government taxes on it and then like, she, like Lillian has said, you know, they, they have to have a portion for fuel, etc, etc. If we can talk about mitigating the cost of fares, I think the East African countries must cooperate and, and let's try and make something, like I said, the, the Open Skies Agreement, which is actually signed, it's on paper, but hasn't been effective. For now, it is clear that investments in the hospitality industry could have a multiply effect, given the ever-increasing demand for holiday makers, majority arriving by airlines. This is a very important uh, earner of foreign currency on these, on, on, in Zanzibar and in Kenya as well, and, and I, I assume in Uganda also. Uh, it has a lot of potential, and I think if the public sector became more involved in the um, marketing of the destinations, that would be a very big step. So this is Precision Air, comfortable flight, by the way, that I had, apart from the uncomfortable feelings you get in the skies as you come down, which happens to all the airlines, including the big ones. So this airline resumed its flights uh, to Uganda through Entebbe International Airport on the 1st of July. And it has go to two, four uh, destinations for now. You can go to Kilimanjaro, you can also go to Dar es Salaam. And it has got other 10 destinations that it flies to. So if you're doing business, that sounds pretty much a good deal. This airline joins other big boys in the skies. It joins KQ, Ethiopian Airlines, Emirates, Etihad Airlines, and the rest. How successful it's gonna be depends on how the industry handles airline related businesses. Challenges notwithstanding, there's consensus that a connected EAC and the continent is a recipe for growth. Malcolm Sime, NTV Weekend Edition.